Well, here we are trying to trying to do it right. You know, we should have known Southeast Texas though. You ain't gonna between uh, between Crosby and Mom Bellevue, you don't need no mask. Ain't no Rona out here. What you got? Rona, ain't the Rona you gotta worry about. What you got? Green and blue. Okay, well, I, I brought some uh, some snacks and stuff. Yeah, but I want this. Well, you don't want my stuff then, huh? <coughs> oh, I said, yeah, I said, that's what I thought. We're rolling. Yep. See the light flash? Yeah. Well, good morning, guys. We are back out here. Heading to do some summer scouting. Appreciate y'all checking in this morning. Got my buddy Josh with me this morning. Giving a thumbs up there, handling the camera for the time being. Josh has uh, been on a couple of these little adventures with me before. He's uh, he my best good friend. <laughs> uh, we're actually bringing Josh's bow. In case we run into some pigs, you can see that clip on the last video where I ran into a huge group of hogs and of course, I didn't have anything with me. I wasn't out there really looking for hogs or anything. But Josh is going to come, and he is actually looking for his first kill with a bow. So pretty cool if we can make that happen. I think some of the areas we're going to, you know, I'm sure there'll be some hog signs. So we'll see what we can find. But primarily where we're going this morning, this first spot we're going to, is access from the east. It's really a long area in the middle of some monotonous timber that it looks like there's a change in the tree line, a change in the habitat, so I want to go check that out. It's really in the middle of a big block. It might it looks like there might be a little bit of a water source and maybe some change in the type of vegetation there. So, And it's also an eastern access with the wind predominantly north and south, and it's a long area, so we can pop in from the east side and be able to work our way in later if we're going to go hunt. So we'll see how that goes and we'll pop into a second spot later but we're just doing some speed scouting for access this morning it's gonna be hot yeah it's gonna be real hot so we're hoping to get everything in by noon I think and Josh said that if I tell him uh, one more spot more than once he's gonna take all my fronts out so <laughs> So it's going to be a good time. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get on, get on a pig. I've been seeing a lot of pigs lately for some reason when I go out. So Josh is going to be packing in the bow. I'll be packing in the camera. And if we get a shot, hopefully we get some. That'd be pretty sweet right there. So get some meat. Yep. Bring home some summer meat. So I got this virus on. We got to do it for me and mine. Hey, right. <laughs> hey. So we'll see you out there. All right, well, we had a little change of plans. We went to this new spot earlier this morning. We found out we didn't have the access we thought we did. Plus, the area did not look very hunter friendly. It didn't look like a place where I would want to leave my car. I mean, what'd you think? Uh, yeah, it was kind of, it was kind of questionable. So, but the access was not what we thought it was off the list. If we were going in there in the dark trying to figure out whether we wanted to hunt this area we would have been driving around and probably wasted a morning hunt on try to, trying to figure out how to get in there without encroaching on without encroaching on public or uh, private property so we pulled off to the side of the road over here we got the fiesta the old scout mobile speaking of i need a nickname for the fiesta so if any of you guys got an idea for a nickname Drop it down in the comments or shoot a message or something. I think I've been calling it the uh, I think I've been calling it the Silver Streak. We're gonna head down the sign right here. We're gonna cut across. Talk about some of the detail. Now this is gonna be more of a rut oriented spot. Simply just because it's a pinch between private and public. And if a buck was gonna travel from one block of timber to the other, he would have to make this corner. So we're gonna go check this out. Josh has got his bow and his pack ready to go. And if we run into a hog or two. I can un unbutton him real quick and we can try to get on him, get set up or loop around and maybe we can, uh, maybe, we, maybe we'll be able to get on him. So feeling pretty good about this spot. We'll get in there and check it out, see what it looks like. So 
So we're making our way back here so far and we kind of got in this little transition area between here and our location. You can see about 25 yards over here to my right. You got real thick cover, real thick high stem count type of cover. And then about 40 yards over there, you got the same thing. Real high, thick, viney cover. And then right over here, you've got a massive, massive oak tree. And it's just like this little flat. And you got another massive oak tree right here. So a couple of willow oaks. We found a couple of rubs through here. Really odd because I couldn't, it was, it was hard to see on the map. As we walked through here, we found a few rubs from uh, years past and then a couple from this year. So we're gonna we're gonna walk this back a little ways, see if it pinches down. But I could certainly see this early season, another big oak up here, being a pretty good area. Now the funnel we're trying to look for is probably another. 500 yards through the woods back here, but this is a neat little find. It's open, open for this part of Texas. This could be a spot where we could get lucky. There's no rub right there, Josh. This is pretty, this is pretty wild right here. So Josh and I, we're working our way through the back of this flat. You can tell it gets some water you can see the moss growing see that growing on the bottom of those trees yeah. so you can tell it gets wet back in here but you look out through here I mean I can see for 60 yards and probably shoot for 40 if I wanted to another huge oak tree right here when we come to the end of this little flat and we got this little kind of transition where everything comes together look at all of this couple a lot of little small pines not a lot of sunlight getting to the ground so a lot of them really don't look very healthy but look right here right here we transition out from this flat to this thick stem cover look at this rub right here it's a pretty decent rub I can see a few more sprinkled out in between here so really mature oak trees up through here this could be a pretty sweet spot like I said, Josh brought his bow. We started running into some hog sign. Cause look at here. Nice big hog scratch right there. So we'll keep our eyes open. Keep your ears open. If you hear some, we might be able to slip through and find something. Well, me and Josh just got out of the spot. Really didn't turn into what we uh, what we had hoped it would, but it potentially something better and we found a sweet little transition area with massive oak trees some of the biggest oak trees I mean I've ever seen on public ground but that uh, traffic going by but I pulled it up again on the map and as big as a transition as that is you couldn't even see it from the map so and we'll plug that in right now I'll, show, I'll draw you a square out of and we'll, we'll show that what it looks like but as far as the corner where we were looking at hunting a rut spot, it was really too thick. Really too thick to get into, unless you're shooting like seven yards. You're probably gonna spook them. It's gotta be huntable. You're gonna make a lot of noise getting in there, so. But we found a lot of good sign, found some rubs, found some trails coming in and out of that flat area. With those oak trees, that thing's gotta be sweet mid -Nove or uh, mid and late October. Or a little cruising area or a feeding area you, you, you could shoot a buck the first day of season out there if he's comfortable and that's really what i'm looking for i'm looking for the place where the deer are comfortable as often as possible as early as possible because they're not going to be comfortable there forever but the whole point is we got some people checking this out we're going to head off to the next spot one more in us oh, yeah. what do we say uh, just one more just one more <laughs> just one more right this is a good time, right? Yeah. You try to make the best use of your time. You try to scout, do what you can do. Then you wind up sitting here, <laughs> staring at the backside of somebody from Virginia. Not that I dislike Virginians or nothing, you know, but 
could be anybody's backside don't really matter right, right. I don't want to see it <laughs> <laughs> So we just jumped out of the car here. Myself and Josh, we're gonna work our way back into this big piece. I've actually scouted on another half of this. This is a really huge national forest area. So we're gonna be on the far end. Some areas I wanted to get back to last year, but never made it. And this is also good for if there's some pressure or if there's not good sign at the other area, I can pop down here about a mile away and we can come in here be able to check it on the fly that way you know we're being mobile and we're not just confined to one spot so we're gonna head back in here it says we got 1.55 miles it means we go in there 1.5 miles we gotta come out 1.5 am i calculating that right <laughs> so we got a ways to go we're going back in here because there's a couple of pockets of diversity way back in here there's also some private land to the east really big chunk of private land and it looks like um they might have like a cattle operation or something. We might look at what they're gonna do, maybe what they got going on their side, but we're gonna check this area for historical sign. Well, we can get in here because it's kind of like the spot we went to this morning where we can access from the east with the wind primarily being north and south in this area. No matter which way the wind blows in, we can still access it from the same spot and then we can gauge how far in we can push based on how the deer are using that area and how they're funneling through there so should be a pretty cool spot i'm pretty excited but well, we got a ways to go and chances are we'll get sidetracked somewhere in there right because we'll, we'll see a fresh track a big track there's already hog tracks in the parking lot so josh has got his bow up and ready so we might walk and listen for a little while hopefully we can get him on something he's flinging arrow he'll probably pass out by the time he draws back <laughs> so we just got out here are walking through this sort of natural area so just a lot of a lot of this yellow grass and some switch grass on the far side some Indian grass sprinkled in it and I'm walking around I'm looking for these clusters of trees like this these little pockets and I'm looking for beds so right over there under that tree there's a little bed I'm checking these little clusters And we're also gonna walk the edge to check for check for some beds. There's some big oak trees. That, this is probably about a this is a pretty good sized area. It's bigger than I thought. We're walking through here, looking for some beds. Probably more towards the edge. There's a huge tree up here. Looks like it might be a pecan tree, but there's a ton of oak trees up on the north side, and it looks like there's a big ravine over here. So that might play to our advantage too. So. Now this grass is getting pretty thick. Right, so some of those beds that were over there earlier looked old. Just looking to see if we could jump anything out of here. Come down here and see what we can find. So we made it down here. We didn't find much sign up in the up in that field. So we moved down here with the southern tip of that. CRP stuff dips down in here and it gets really low. There's a lot of a lot of water foliage you can see. Look how thick this gets behind me. All this over here. We started finding a lot of tracks. We found a down tree that looked like it would have beds around it, but we didn't find anything. But we're finding a ton, ton of different a ton of different types of browse and food down in here. There's not a lot of oak trees, but the tracks are in here. There's tracks in here. There's a couple sets of big tracks. But you can see up here, there's a big ridge and it kind of dumps down into this low area. And there's a drainage that they're walking down. But then right back in here is where it gets real thick. So maybe early season, they could be bedding back up here where it gets high and they're working down in here. And out here where it gets wet, right in this little pocket right here, it's so wet, there's a lot of different types of browse and foliage than there is anywhere else. That's really what I look for out here, especially in East Texas, is quite simply anything that looks different from the area around it. And this is probably about a three acre little piece. We found a few rubs, but mostly this is just a lot of different types of habitat coming together. So 
we did find a good spot look like for a camera up there so we might throw a camera we surprised we haven't jumped anything there's got to be some pigs back in here too you know wouldn't you think so we're on our way out of this piece we wanted to come look at this far corner because there's about five or six huge post oaks right here in this corner now this is on the north end of this piece and over here there's this little cluster this little cluster of cover and there's a couple of little rubs in and around it makes me believe that they are using this there's a small little trail going up in there they will be bedding right here maybe early season there's a rub on the edge of this right here and they're getting up and going out to those oak trees going out to those oak trees keeping it simple but right in here and Josh just hollered at me from down the ravine there's a drain drainage that comes right here trail that comes off of this point and drops right down in there it's real steep and uh, he's got a fresh track sounds like he found some scat too so we'll go check it out so we're right here around that little brush that I was walking around there's a couple of little rubs around it it's a little ravine we get down here there's a couple of good tracks and Josh found some scat right here it looks pretty fresh so fresh sign is good sign we don't care what it belongs to at this point but it makes sense for right here on this point and come out right here ease up over the top of this hill scan the scan the CRP area you got the big oaks off to the left some thick cover to the right so they wouldn't even have to bed that far off here in the early season it kind of gives you a gauge of where we could set up because look if they're bedded in and around this brush or somewhere around back here we can get just far enough to where you can't get close enough to this little crest of a hill to where they see us go up or they see us set up you stay far enough back just out of sight because if you get too close to the top of the hill they're gonna see us so it's really just about how close can you get without them seeing you also when you ascend the tree if you ascend a tree how close are you to a bedding that they might see you that's why really height isn't that important you don't have to be 20 feet you might get eight feet just high enough so you can see them when they come up and stage up right here so it's a pretty cool spot right here got them rubs. little rub right here We stopped by our old spot here. And yeah! 
and Josh found his release. All right, we're ready now. Let's see it. You found it? Yeah. Golly. We swung by here on the way back. It wasn't too far out of the way, so Josh found his release. Probably saved him 30 bucks. You know, one thing we forgot to mention about this spot is that there's some private land close by that where we found that they do have some feeders hanging from the tree. There's an old feeder laying on the ground. Not really sure how they're gonna use it, but they do. It's a really nice area on the back side of the property. I didn't film it, just didn't wanna you know, encroach on their privacy. Uh, but they did have a feeder back there. But to me, that's it's along those same lines as understanding the way people use the private land. Whether it's planting oats for cows, or they're farming, but there's not much agriculture out here to speak of. So, but if they're feeding deer like that, and they're adjacent to public land, I mean, really, it's it's an advantage to the public land hunter to understand how it's being used, possibly being able to intercept those deer before they get there. So, that's something to consider. We're gonna have to come back and scout that spot again. Maybe drop a camera in there later, see some tracks. Uh, seeing if they're using that private property it did have some really nice oak trees big majestic oaks on there too even on the public side so really cool area but anyway we got josh's release back so that makes the day that much better right oh, yeah. so we're feeling good about it we'll see you on the next one hopefully i got i got a, i got a thought we might have some pretty cool fishing videos coming up sometime soon too so we'll see you on the next one thanks for stopping in if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe, let us know. See you next time.